Today I want to share with you how I build this drill press stand. Now this is just to hold my drill press, but you can make a stand like this for anything in your shop, any tool that you know you want. This is very, very strong. And as you can see, has double three quarter inch plywood. So it has one and a half in the top, one and a half in the bottom. And that is because I wanted something that was really heavy because this drill press is 85 pounds and most of its weight is on the top. So it's very top heavy. And I wanted to make a base that is really heavy and strong to be able to support that and you know make it so it doesn't wobble. Also, it was important to me to put casters on because I do like to move my stuff around the shop. I work in a two-car garage shop, so it's a pretty small uh, place. So it's important for me to be able to shift things around. Out of curiosity, if you're wondering for the height of the drill press. This drill press, it's the model, let's see, 4214T. And um, I am five foot five on height. For reference, if you wanna know, this is kind of the table height for me with this uh, stand build. I know that was one thing that I always wonder, what is the proper height for a drill press? If you have the answer to that, please leave it in the comments below because I had no idea. I had to put my drill press on many, many stands to try it on, see what was comfortable for me. And then I came up with this size over here. Now, if you do decide to buy this drill press, um, I do recommend you get this table for it. Table makes things so much easier and it's totally worth the money. The drill press was very affordable. I believe it was $250 for it on Amazon. That's where I bought it from. And I will leave a link to the drill press and the table onto the description below if you decide to purchase the same thing. Now the stand, just for reference, like I said, I'm five, five, five on height. This is 27 inches from the floor to the top of the base. We have 23 inches on the width and we have, let's see, 22 inches depth. So without any further ado, let's get right into it and show you how I build this. Now, I already prepped everything ahead because, you know, I didn't want to make this video an hour long. So what I did, the top and the bottom, I cut them 23 inches by 21 inches. So that would be the top and the bottom. Also for the top and bottom, I started by laminating together. That means I glued together two three quarter inch plywood. And now we have this one and a half inch uh, base for the bottom and one for the top. So I already went ahead and did those. Another thing I did is I added some dominoes. That's how we will attach the sides. So as you can see, I created the holes for the dominoes. You do not have to use dominoes. You can use um, pocket holes. You can use just glue and you know screws. You can use uh, dowels. You can use whatever you please. But for me, I wanted to use dominoes just because Normally I would use pocket holes, but I didn't want to have to cover those holes. So this will solve that problem. So this is the top part and we're gonna attach the sides. Now the sides, they are, let me tell you the size of it. For the sides we have 21 inches by 20 inches. And what I did for the sides on the table saw, I created two dados and this dados is going to allow us to put shelves on it. That way we can put drawers to store all of our, you know, drill bits and stuff. So I already went ahead and did that. Now it's time to attach this side to the top. And I am going to use dominoes and glue. I'm using tie bond three because that's what I have. And I'm getting my little handy dandy wipes. I love these wipes for the shop to wipe my fingers as I put glue. Just like that. Then I also need, I'll also use one of these little tools just to be able to spread around the glue inside the holes for the dominoes. So let's see. This is my top base. This is my shelves. First thing, I have to glue this like this. So that's what we will be doing. First, I'm going to put glue onto the side itself. Wait. 
And now I'll put some glue onto the holes here. I'm going to spread it around. Now we can put the dominoes in. We need to make sure we smoosh the glue on the dominoes. And I let this sit for a minute or so because when you work with end grain, usually it sucks in all the glue. So you let it sit for like a minute and then you apply glue again. And now all those end grains are sealed and it will accept glue better. And now all we need to do is drop it in place. Wipe off the excess glue. So now we have something like this. I am going to attach the top. What should I do? I should probably do the shelves first. Let's do the shelves. Now for the casters, I like to use this super duper heavy duty casters and they work so, so well. I have it on all my things in the shop and I'll be uh, putting it together with these log screws with a washer. So that's how these casters go. I'm going to do that now. For the back part, I will just uh, add some glue and screw it in place. So that's what I'm doing now. It started to rain outside. Now the stand is pretty much done. We just have to let the glue dry up and it's all in clamps right now. We'll come back in about an hour or two and then we'll attach the drill press to it. Now my plan for this cabinet, it is to make drawers, but I do not have enough half inch plywood. So once I go buy some, we will make another video with my favorite way to make drawers. Now I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.